Hi, welcome to my live Facebook. This is Mercy Yermakoff, and I'm an independent Stamp It Up demonstrator. In tonight's presentation, I'll be showing you several crafts, and I hope you can enjoy that. I did want to mention that Stamp It Up is having a sale going on right now. It lasts 24 hours, so it ends tonight, I think around 3 a.m., because they're on the West Coast. Anyhow, um, I hope you can come and follow along and if you have any questions Lynn will be answering most of them if not sit back and enjoy and I will show you shortly on a couple of crafts I've come up with I will be turning around the screen and I hope it doesn't make you sick <laughs> if it does shut your eyes okay take care and I will show you the next part which is the crafts now I need to situate my camera so this will take me a second um, if you want to place an order please go to stamp it up and the host code at checkout you can see here on the screen now the first craft I'm going to show is going to um, be this really cute um, gift bag I need to um, see okay yeah here I want to make sure I can see on my son's um, Oh, it, and I do not need volume on his iPad. I thought I disabled that. Okay, bear with me a second. Okay, so to start with, I'm going to show you how I made this really, I think, adorable gift bag. You can put candy in it, or you can put little gifts in it, whatever you feel like. So I want to show you how I made that. If anyone is having trouble hearing, please let me know. I will once in a while look at the um, what's written just to make sure that there are no issues. So the first thing I did was bring in my Stampin' Trimmer, and this is a wonderful tool to have. You can trim with it and score with it. And I created a template. I'm really a big believer in making templates. And in this template, I show exactly where to score. So I started off at the one inch, which you can see here. I have done the scoring on this, but I just wanted to show you just how simple it is. So I scored it, then um, maybe you can't see that part. Okay, then I turned it around because I wanted the um, most of it. So I scored here, then I turned it here and lined it up at three inches, scored it again, and then moved it down to um, down here. So I think this is like an inch and a half or so and scored it here. All right, but you don't, I don't really need to show that too much, but the point is having a template really can help reduce the number of mistakes you make, if you will. So uh, having a bone folder is important. It really helps. I, you could do without it for this because the paper isn't super thick when it's this DSP, which stands for designer series paper. Okay, I'm glad the audio came on, Rachel. I appreciate you joining me. This is an adventure. Um, I've seen live Facebooks and they make it look very easy and it's actually a little harder than I ever thought. <laughs> but I like a challenge. Now, I use these um, cellophane bags to create the um, gift bag and the Stamp It Up sells these naturally. And what the best way to put this in is actually take the one inch part here and, well, first you gotta kind of enlarge your bag if you will. <laughs> and of course, it is a little bit tricky, but not it's really not too bad. So you just wanna work it way, your way down. Then the next part is just to get some good old tape and um, get this flap so it's not going to show on you because no one wants that like rearing its ugly head. So here we go, just put it here. I, here. So that's that's basically all it is. I think it's very straightforward. Now, um, here is my stuffing. So to stuff it, I just grab a little bit and put it in. And there you have a little. But of course, this isn't all I do. We gotta decorate it. And decorating it is part of the fun, of course. I'm sorry for all the rustling. You gotta add a couple treats. Oh, we can't be that stingy, come on. All right, there we go. So it's 
cute like this and you could just you know put a clip on it and be done but naturally I like to do a little bit more embellishing than that so I will show you how I created how we did the owl that goes on top I love owls and this particular set I think is just absolutely beautiful I love this set I use it a lot. I've made a beautiful Christmas card with it. And at the end, I'll try to show you a few cards that I've made with th these three sets that I'm featuring tonight. So this is called a Stamparatus for those of you who are not familiar with it. It's a um, stamp positioning tool. So it does help to support the, sh the door, these um, windows, doors, whatever they're called. I'm not sure, I think they're doors. <laughs> I should maybe look that up before I do one of these. Okay, so I have die cutted this, stamped it, die cutted it, and then now I'm putting in a die cut and I'm just kind of replacing it. And this is very handy if you're doing multiple step stamping. So it's really um, easy to do and you can see how you could do many, many of these. So I use soft suede ink. So I'll just bring this in quickly stamp it and what I the one of the reasons why I wanted to use this stamparatus is because it's not dark enough the first layer see I don't know if you can see that really well but the image is just kind of a little bit faded I feel like it's pretty but it could use another coat and that's the beauty of the stamparatus so you can bring it right back in and go exactly the same position now, I like that, but I feel like the eyes could be a little bit brighter. So I'm just gonna bring this stamp pad in and just lightly tap on his eyes. And I always think of owls as masculine, I don't know why. So that's um, the Stamparatus and just how easy it is to use. I wanted to demonstrate that. Now, this is my Stampin' Chamois and it is stained, but this works great. When you have a Stamparatus, you need to clean your items. So sometimes like, if you do multiple color stamping, this is very useful to clean it right on the stamp pad, right on the um, block, well, the Stamparatus window. All right, so I will um, set this aside. We will be using Stamparatus one more time later on. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this away. And the next part is I'm going to show you the sentiment. Um, and on the set, it comes with this beautiful one that says uh, sending warm wishes your way, which is perfect to include a treat or a gift. I think that's just a, a great um, little sentiment to add to your gift, little gift bag. So I, for this stamp color, I chose Blackberry Bliss. And all these are colors that are in the designer series paper which is really nice to tie it in. So here's the Blackberry Bliss, and this color is called, oh, why is my mind drawing a blank? <laughs> I can never think when I'm doing a video, it feels like. Grapefruit Grove, that's it. So Grapefruit Grove, so I like to incorporate the colors that are on from the DSP. It just ties in the whole project really well. So um, sending warm wishes. Now it doesn't matter that it's not straight because we're gonna be, um, taking it out with the one and one fourth inch punch, which is circular, so it really doesn't matter. The main thing is you just center it. So I'm punching this out, and that's it's really straightforward and quick to use punches. I definitely um, love doing the die cutting, but the punches are faster. So just if you ever are thinking about which way to go, there are pros and cons. I like using both though. <laughs> Got to have it all, right? Okay, so here we go. Um, I will show you, I oh yeah, right here. I'm just going to quickly attach this to um, this backing, which is this beautiful color, it's mint macaron. And I think it goes so well together. So um, yeah, this one I did not use any dimensionals because it is part of our top to secure it. So I'm just gonna pop this baby on and bring in our clothespin. <laughs> now I went ahead and added some glue dots here. So this will make life a little easier for people that are trying to make this craft. 
I like to do a few shortcuts just to speed things up. And here we go. I just line this up really straight. Now I don't want to have it like this, but I do want it to be straight. And I think that's pretty good. Okay, isn't that cute? Now we're gonna tie the whole thing together. I will um, bring out my, um, where the awl, the awl is eventually going to sit on here. But one of the things I found was if I went ahead and added at this point, it was kind of hard to see when it was straight. So I found it was better to attach the circle, this die cutted circle first, and then add the awl. And another thing I need to do quickly is do the coloring, which is always fun. Very little coloring on this. You almost need to do nothing, but I think it's cute to go ahead and add this grapefruit grove just to his cute little nose. And there, that's it. That's all the coloring this one has. <laughs> super easy, super fun. So um, again, I'm going to go ahead and add this. Now, one of the important things to remember is only adhere to the top half because you don't want it to attach to the bag. You want to be able to open and shut this bag multiple times. So I'm just bringing in my scissor. This is tear and tape, which I like using for stuff like this. I, could, I actually could use a little bit more. And you can just tear it like the name suggests. Although I usually I don't for some reason. I don't know why. I guess I like the neat look of the straight um, when you cut it. <laughs> That doesn't make sense, but I'm a little bit anal. Okay, so I'm bringing this back in and I just want to make sure it's pretty straight and I want to have my, I don't want to adhere the um, tape below. So I was successful, see, that's what you want. And actually, you know, that would be a good idea. Just lay it upside down, put it on and you're good. Hmm. I'll have to think about that trick, okay. Um, so here we have our owl, and I love using dimensionals, so every project pretty much gets dimensionals. And dimensionals just make things pop, as it the name suggests. It adds dimension, it layering gives it a more 3D look to any project, which is a good thing. So I am a big fan of these little dimensionals. They are not too expensive. You get quite a few for like four bucks, so they're not too bad. All right, so here's where I want to try to make my owl as straight as I can, but you know, he probably, if he's perched somewhere, he isn't completely straight either, because after all, he is in nature, right? All right, so here is the conclusion of this project and how it comes together actually really very quickly and easily. I hope you enjoyed that. Next, we will be doing a tag for olive oil. And the final one will be a card. So this shows you how you can use stamps for more than just cards, which I love making cards, but especially around the holidays, it's fun to make some gift ideas too. All right, so the tag is from the stamp set at home with you, yes. Sorry, I had to think about that. It's right here. It has all these beautiful sentiments. On the background I hear, I, I stamped here, I feel at home when I'm with you. And I think this just makes an amazing um, hostess gift to put on a bottle. And one of my ideas was why not olive oil? If you do not drink wine or you just want to give something at like Thanksgiving, you can just do this or you can do wine too, <laughs> either way. But I have one other stamp that I'm gonna use and I'll demonstrate that in a bit and um, two choices for stamping, what to stamp. Okay, so I will first of all bring in some scratch paper to cover my work surface because this part is gonna be a little messy and it's so much fun. This is called Emboss Resist. So we are going to resist where I stamped the um, sentiment here, I feel at home when I'm with you with ink. So this will be green. So watch the magic happen. <laughs> I don't know why this never gets old with me. So I just bring out my stamp pad and just bring it in. You can start light. Some people start off, but with the light color, it's not as critical if you're using a dark color and you don't want marks. So you just 
This color, by the way, is soft sea foam, and I think it's really elegant, and I love it, especially with the olive oil idea. <laughs> I think of olive oil as kind of green, but it's actually more yellow. But I do have some um, yellowish colors. I have the, oh, what is that? M melon mango. Melody, no, oh, oh boy. Mango Melody, there, I got that out. <laughs> Eventually I'll get it there. So isn't that pretty? And it's just so simple and I'm not like being super careful. And you don't really have to be careful with this because this is a background. I'm essentially creating the designer series paper for my project. So I think that's really cool and fun. I hope you agree and if you don't, you still have to watch. <laughs> because I'm just like that. All right, so I'm going to show you how I stamp the sentiment. This, um, I'm gonna bring in some Whisper White cardstock, and I will bring in my Memento ink and my stamp pad. And this is called Photopolymer, these stamps. They're slightly different than the other um, Rub, red rubber, but they work really wonderfully and have some advantages and I would be happy to answer any questions you have What the difference is so I will go ahead and ink this up And you you can see totally if you've inked it up well, I don't know That it's coming across in the video, but you can see it's really well inked and what you see is what you get so I just want to Stamp it and there I'm good now, I would suggest before coloring to give this a little bit of time so it completely dries. So I've gone ahead and stamped an image and I've already um, have it on a piece of paper here. And I actually started a little bit of the coloring just because this one kind of takes a little while and I don't wanna take two hours of your time. So I will sit down. It is easier to sit and color. You have much better control and I, would always recommend sitting for coloring. You can position your hands to stabilize. Now, I'm not the best color at coloring, but with the Stampin' Blends, you can do amazing coloring with little to no experience, which is wonderful for someone like me. And the Stampin' Blends comes in two colors of the same, I mean, two light and a dark of the same color. So you can buy them separately or you can buy them as a pair or a combo as they call it. So anyhow, I will just quickly show you how I'm low lighting with the dark. I've already added the light and I'm just going to bring in my fine, the thin tip edge and I'm going to color sort of randomly here and there. So I get some of the dark low lights and contrast really brings out it draws your eye even if you don't totally see it immediately you will start to notice it after a little while so anyhow i just add a here and there sort of random then i'm going to bring in my dark old olive blend and again same tip i just want to go where the leaf is showing me the center, the veining kind of, I guess you would call it, and it will just kind of highlight it. So you can kind of see how that just comes together. I hope you can see that because I, right now I don't have a perspective on what you can see. I hope I didn't miss the whole camera screen <laughs> on that one. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in my light pumpkin pie and just quickly color in these pumpkins. Now I didn't start the pumpkins, maybe I should have, but they just go pretty fast. So, and you don't have to be super careful. You can go a little bit over the um, lines. I wouldn't scrub at it. And of course, never on the brush end scrub. They, these um, markers have two ends. They have a fine tip end, and then they have what they call the brush end. So you just wanna come in lightly. I don't know, see that the difference with that end versus this end. They're quite a bit different when you're doing a really tiny area. I like using this. If I'm adding low lights, I definitely like adding the fine tip end. Thin tip, I should say. Not fine tip, but it is sort of finer in a sense. 
although you can get a finer line with the brush tip. Okay, so I'm just adding in again, I'm following what the artist already did for me, which is drawing these lines and it and I'm just coloring it a little bit. See? And it makes me look like an artist when I am definitely not. <laughs> so there you go. You have these at much more dimensional. I'll show you up close again. So there you can see the pumpkin. Now the final step, well actually not final final, but one of the final steps is to do the vase. And, I, and you can come back in if you missed any spots, I see a little bit. But I'm, I'm not gonna be overly picky tonight. You can do that on your own time, right? That's what you're probably thinking. Just get on with it. We don't care if there's a tiny dot missing. We just want to see the finished project. Okay, I'm tough on myself, but no worries. I hope you can still enjoy um, seeing how really amazing these stamp sets are and the Stampin' Up! products I feel like really do sell themselves. They're always high quality and they last for years and you just have some, I at least have so much fun with creating things with them. I'm always really excited when I come up with a new project and one of the, the best tips I can give for new people is definitely, and even seasoned stampers do it, go on Pinterest and you can get so many ideas. Just do a search on any stamp set you're thinking of and you will be so amazed at all what all the amazing things people do. Okay, so the final step, oh, I didn't add the centers. <laughs> okay, so I need to bring in my light Cajun craze. Now I didn't use this color. It's a little bit more brown than the pumpkin pie, which if you look at um, sunflowers, they kind of have more of a brown center, I think. But of course, we are not totally about being realistic, so you can see that. And then one of the most fun things is to add Wink of Stella. Now just shake it up and you just pull it off simply. You don't try to unscrew it. And then I'm just going to add on these, just color, and you notice I'm not being very careful, and you don't have to be with Wink of Stella. It's very um, subtle. It's not like a heavy glitter. And I'm gonna color these pumpkins. These pumpkins are gotta, they needed some shine, right? There, and that's just, it's very quick to do. So the next step, I'm going to go ahead, bring in my punch and punch this out and show you how quickly this goes. I think we did most of the, like the time consuming parts. And you just center this up nicely and boom you get your beautiful image all punched out perfectly every time. So I will go ahead and add the layers, some of the back to this. So this colored stock is Pool Party and it's one of the colors that we use from the blends. I love tying in colors, so markers, paper, you name it. Repeating, adding colors, it's just, I think just adds so much to each project to um, just keep incorporating things. All right, um, so that was the Starburst Punch, in case you're wondering. And I will quickly um, add this. I do want to look at, oh, yeah, I did just add it flat, and the next part I added my dimensionals. I don't want to forget to add those dimensionals, because the dimensionals just are amazing. They just make me so happy. I can't say enough about them. They're like a quick fix when you want to just add a little bit more pizzazz. Now with the wet glue, don't, don't use a ton. Less is more, really. Honestly, less is more. Just scribble a little bit on it and that's plenty. If you add a bunch, you're gonna have a huge mess that's gonna get all of your hands and you're just not gonna enjoy it. If you use it sparingly, you're gonna enjoy it and it'll last longer. So you got a double benefit. Now, this is from the um, label, what was it called? Uh, I, I'm trying to think. Um, Stitch label dies, they're called. And I thought it just really added a lot to this particular card. Now, I will um, go ahead, wait, uh, I think I'll wait to attach this until I do the next parts. So, back to the base. Now we need to get to the base. So here's my base. And again, you know how I am very fond of creating templates. I will show you some of my, um, my template here. 
So here's my template. It shows me exactly what, how to cut this, where to score it, everything I need to know, where the DSP goes, etc. Here is more cheats. So I just <laughs> love having templates because it just makes for a lot less mistakes. Now here's another template. Now with this one, I'm just gonna line it up. Um, where is my pencil? Oh, here it is. For a second there, I was afraid I lost it or forgot to bring it with me, but we would manage even so. Okay, so there I just um, create a little pencil mark and this will help me know where to punch for my bottleneck hole. So I actually like coming in from this direction. And it doesn't have to be 100% centered, but come on, we need it somewhat centered. So having a template definitely, I think that's pretty good. What do you think? That will work. Okay, so I'm just gonna set that aside and you can definitely reuse this. And we will start building our layers. So the first, the first one will be this, I feel at home with you, my homemade DSP designer series paper and again not a lot of glue just enough enough to get it on and it will give you a little bit of time if you get it a little bit off which I kind of feel like that could be a little better I can actually shift it just a tiny bit but we don't want it sliding like pudding <laughs> we just want it to be on there all right so I um, I did add twine to the other one, which I forgot here. Uh, uh, let's see if I can, no, I yeah, I can add it still. Okay, don't do this like I did it. I did make a little mistake here. You're supposed to add your twine and then attach it. So I am definitely goofed here a little bit, but you'll have to forgive me because, well, that just comes with the territory. All stampers make mistakes. And you can see that I was kind of able to fix it, which is a good thing. You constantly do like make little mistakes. So I'm just gonna slide this up. Actually, I want it up a little further. And it's gonna be a little offset. So anyway, you get the idea. So I'm just gonna trim this up. And adding the twine, I think, just kind of helps add a little extra touch to it. And then I'm going to go ahead and add this label. So I will need to remind people when I do this live and in person to <laughs> not to forget to add the twine like I just did. Oh well, stuff happens. It happens, okay. And if it does, then they can know that I made the same mistake. All right, so dimensionals, dimensionals. You know how I love the dimensionals. So we're gonna add the dimensionals and pop this baby up. And you only need about three, maybe four, whatever you feel like, you know, you don't have to get carried away. It'll hold it up. It's not, we're not lifting weights here. So just add it to the center. And then the final thing is the sentiment. So I will bring in that. I thought, oh, 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 sorry. Stuff goes flying when you're doing crafting sometimes. It just happens. Okay, oh, I did have another one here, an extra one. Um, where is my little scrap of paper? Oh, that's what I need. Okay, I'm seeing it. So this particular stamp is from the next stamp set that I'm gonna use which is called Country Home, and this comes from that. So although it is from a different set than the At Home With You, it is part of this whole lineup that I'm, of the three sets I'm featuring tonight. Or actually, technically they're four sets, but who's counting? Okay, so for the ink, I just used the Memento Black Ink, and I will show you how I did this because Obviously my paper is too long. So basically what I did was try to line it up well on one side and then we're gonna do some trimming. So there it is. I will um, cover my stamp pad and bring in my 
scissors and where are my scissors? Uh, yeah, I can't believe this. I, I don't see my snips right now. So no, not to worry. I'm gonna bring in the trimmer again, which I was thinking maybe I would use this anyway. And hopefully my snips will turn up soon. If they don't, I'll use the big ones, which work okay, but they kind of leave a serrated edge. I like using them for my um, ribbon and that sort of thing. Okay, so this one's a scoring, and then I have a cutting one. Obviously, I don't need to score that. I might. Okay, and I wanna try to get really quite close. This stamp set isn't perfect for this, but it says what I want it to say, which I think it's a really a great Thanksgiving sounding thing, which is harvest, happy harvest blessing. Okay, so bringing this back, I will just go ahead and adhere this and use my white glue again. Okay, so, oh, I did a little, so you don't need quite that much. A little less would be fine. But a little bit of wet glue goes a long way. Um, okay, we're putting this down. There we go. And I like having a pretty equal border, so that works for me. I'll just bring in my wet glue. And I'm almost, we're almost done with this one. Can you believe it? Yay. We are getting to, through these crafts pretty fast. All right, so just bring that in and there you have the tag. Now I will um, show you the original and I think I did okay. The only last thing to do is to burnish this score line, which is just as simple as like that. <laughs> Burnished, done. I mean, I could bring out the bone fold and do it a little better, but you know, it's good enough. Oh, I think I got this a little crooked. Maybe it was when I was doing stuff, acrobatics with this. But you can see it lasts a little bit and you can kind of fix things. And if you're particular about things being straight, well, the wet glue is really a good solution for that. I think it's just really cute tag and a nice gift to, maybe this would make a really nice for Thanksgiving to give to someone. You can have wine or the olive oil idea like I have. All right, so the final card is going to be this um, buffalo, using this buffalo check and the country home set. And I think this looks like a Thanksgiving scene. It looks like this is like the tablecloth and this is the centerpiece. I wish my centerpiece would look like that. And then it's got a fancy, well, I, this could be the tablecloth too. Huh, okay, well, anyway, enough of that. I'm gonna bring in my tools <laughs> because right now I have this on a side table, so it's a little farther away. I'll just bring in everything. Here we go, I'm just gonna set this a little out of camera view so you don't get dizzy. And you can see how I made this card. Now I will start with the beautiful background. And this is really what it looks like to start off with. It's a plain Knight of Navy cardstock that I'm using. But where the magic happens is called embossing. Embossing is so much fun. It's addictive. Give a shout out if you agree with me. So we're gonna bring back in the Stamparatus. But this time, I'm just gonna take out my window, remove that, set that aside, and I'm gonna bring in my other window. By the way, it, does, it comes with two windows and you can buy additional windows, which is really awesome. Okay, so here's my new window. And because there's an overlap, I add a little bit of an L here. And this helps me, yeah, I'm trying to get this straight, so that I can have it overlap slightly. So you'll see in a second. So bringing this in, I'm going to set my um, paper in. And normally you would put the magnet on the paper, but because this covers it, we really can't do that, unfortunately. So it takes a little bit of, it's not extremely tricky, but you know, it's not your first embossing experience type of job to do, start with. I went and say, now what this is, is to get rid of all the static and to get rid of my fingerprints. So now I'm gonna to try to be really careful not to add my fingerprints now that I've used my handy dandy embossing buddy to get rid of my fingerprints. 
I don't want to mess it up again. So anyhow, Versamark is the second step. So with the Versamark, now I should have this supported. I don't know, you can't really see this, but I've got to ink this up really well. I don't know if I can slide this. Okay, so can you see how I'm just, I just have to really, and this is really sticky stuff. Now, if you don't get the center perfect, it's okay because most of that will be covered, but you sure want to try to get the edges really well. So I think that's good enough, and we'll see if I, I did a good job. Again, this is not your first embossing job. You shouldn't probably start with this one. This one's a little tricky, but it's just really cool. Now, the bigger the stamp, the more you want to press. A little stamp, little pressure. Just remember that. You do not need to do CPR on most stamps. However, with the background stamps, you kind of do need to. I hate to say it, otherwise you won't get a good impression. So I really want to push hard for a big stamp. Little ones, don't. Do yourself a favor and don't push hard. Okay, now it will stick to the background. So I'm gonna carefully, as I can, pry this off. Okay, so can you see that? That is the semi, that's the start of the project. The next part is to add the embossing powder. Now I like to use a piece of paper. The stuff is kind of eh, a little gritty, I would say. So I like to try to protect my surface as much as possible. Plus I can reuse this. I'm gonna be very generous and I'm just gonna pretty much dump it on. Don't worry, it doesn't use up this much. <laughs> Not to scare you. So the next part, I'm just gonna kind of try to scatter it, if you will. This is really definitely, again, not the first project you should start on for embossing. But I do wanna show that even a difficult one isn't really that difficult. Okay, see how nicely coated that is? That's what you want. And you do not wanna to be touching anywhere on this. So. It's a little bit bad if you do that. So I'm just trying to get rid of some of my powder and I'm gonna bring up, bring in my heat gun. Now this is kind of loud, I do apologize. So my cord is kind of hindering me, but we'll see if I can manage this. <laughs> it's a little bit of a three ring circus around here. Um, oh yeah, so one other thing is with this particular card, I do recommend using tweezers so you can hold it and not burn yourself. Uh, I want to try to capture this, so I hope I can. When it starts coming up, look at that. This never ever gets old with me. Seeing it turn to that brilliant silver, it's just so exciting. <laughs> oh, the things that are thrilling to us stampers. I know, it, it doesn't take too much, but isn't that pretty? See how shiny it is? I'm going to try to show this as best as I can and not show the heat gun to the maximum. But you just want to um, watch when it comes up, move on, because you, you can overcook it. You don't want to overcook your embossing. And nothing is as beautiful as embossing, I think, especially around the holidays, although I like using it year-round, uh, with black embossing powder and so forth. It makes coloring easier, like when you're using the blends. As long as you don't get on the embossed part, it works great. Okay, so I'm almost done here, and I'm just going to look over it and make sure that there are no dull parts. And if there's a dull part, I want to hit it again. I see a couple dull parts. But I think that overall looks pretty good. I hope you agree. That is, isn't that stunning? I hope you enjoyed seeing that because that was a little stressful for me. <laughs> but I signed up for this. Okay, so I will bring in the rest of the elements now so you can see what needs to be done to assemble this card. So this is the probably the longest of the projects. I do apologize. I hope you, I'm not going too much over my time. I do plan to conclude this in one hour. So, oh, I see a one spot I missed, but okay. We won't worry too much about that. 
I'll hit it with the heat gun later. You can touch up again after the fact. So I, um, you know, again, I just want to make sure this time I didn't have a ribbon behind this, which I don't. <laughs> like that tag, I really messed that up, oh boy. It can't go perfect, can it? I don't think so. It wouldn't be a real live Facebook if it went perfect. That would, like, people would know it was a fraud then. If you had it all 100% perfect, they'd be like, um, she's not for real. We know that there's something amiss here. Okay, so again, you can straighten a little bit when you're using the glue, which I definitely needed to do. So here we go. Um, the next part I wanna show is how I created this using a small, quite a bit smaller stamp by repeat stamping and by using um, masking technique. So here is my stamp and here's my mask. Now I just need to peel this off. Boy, that's stuck on there. This is a sticky note, which I stamped and cut out the part that I will be stamping over. So again, this one would probably be better if you're sitting. So I will have a seat in a second here after I get everything out that I need to. <laughs> okay. So um, here's my paper. I will um, bring my chair up. Sorry for the scratchy sound because it really does help to line it up looking directly down. And I will um, bring in my stamp pad, which I need to locate. All right, here we go. Here's my memento ink. And what I like to do is to bring the stamp pad to the stamp especially when the stamp pad is kind of smaller than the image. So big stamp pads bring definitely bring the ink pad to it. Okay, stamp it up real well. If it looks like pretty even, then go for it, right? I got a little bit of that powder still on the, this table. Boy, that stuff is hard. All right, so I hope you don't see my head, but if you do, you're gonna have to forgive me because this really does help if you can put your head directly over it. So there's the one image. Then I wanna take my mask that I've created and I wanna put it down right about so. And I wanna see actually a little bit of the black because we want it to really get up and close the image. We don't want gaps, so to speak. So that's one of the tricks with masking because there will be a gap because there's some height here. It's not a lot of height, and in this particular stamp, I wouldn't be too worried about it, but if you're a perfectionist, you know, that's how you do it. So this one, I kind of am going to try to position it in here, and there will be part that will be stamped on. And it's not super hard, but I have to do this sort of, I'm afraid it's gonna be a little off camera, but. All right, so there it is. I kind of wish it were a little bit further down, so this lined up, but when you have it in, no one would ever notice that actually. So it's a halfway decent job. <laughs> I'm a little bit particular, okay, a lot particular. But we want things perfect. Now I did go ahead and fussy cut this one out and started on the coloring a little bit. I actually probably should have done more coloring because we are getting short on time. So I might not finish the coloring, but if you wanna see all the coloring, let me know in the comments, but otherwise we'll just do a little bit of the coloring. Okay, so bringing in my markers. More markers, these are beautiful. Oh, I got the wrong one. <laughs> okay, these are the ones I want. <laughs> Gotta get the right colors. This is Granny Apple Green. This is more of that pool party we used earlier. And this one's Cherry Cobbler. And this one is Night of Navy. So again, I'm trying to incorporate some of the colors from my cardstock into the card itself. And of course my Wink of Stella because a little bit of glimmer and shine is always a good thing. So here we go. I am going to just show you again how I did the, I already did the green. So just adding a few low lights. Now some of these do not have lines. So I just kind of make up the lines, you know? Just make shadows, whatever you want to call it. 
So you just keep coming in and coloring here. Um, I, again, wish I had actually done more of this one because this one is kind of time consuming, so I apologize. But it does go fairly quickly with the um, blends. So flowers, and of course there's two of everything, some th four, some five. <laughs> not the easiest one to color. Um, I'm realizing I'm missing one marker from my stash, which is the uh, crumb cake. And with the crumb cake, I just added like a little color to the cotton to give more dimension. And I really wish I had double checked that I did not have that crumb cake with me. Oh well. But anyhow, I usually like starting with the lighter color and just Color it in. Now, if I'm being really, really careful, I actually try to leave some of those holes. So you can go around doo, 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 and leave some of that white, but it will take a little bit too long, so I'm not gonna bother tonight. Plus, I already forgot my crumb cake, so I'm really bummed about that. Oh, again, things can't go 100% perfect. You would be surprised how much stuff I drug upstairs to do this presentation. So it's bound to, you're bound to forget something. Anyhow, but it gives you a good idea, I think, on what you can do with these stamp sets. And I will be showing a few of the cards I also made using these sets from previous times. So I just add a little bit of the dark to the lower part. You could, and you, you're welcome to interpret this the way you want to. Now, I think these are also seed heads right here, so I'm going to add a little dark there, a little dark lower. All right, so that's that almost concludes the red. I almost forgot these seed heads, which that would be like practically a crime, right? All right, again, the thin tip edge, when the image is tiny, really gives you a lot better control. I'm just, these little ball things, I like having the Knight of Navy, it just adds a little color. Is that an accurate representation of flowers? No, but you know, we're allowed as artists to interpret things. So we can do whatever we please, right? All right, so that is all. I cannot believe I do not have the crumb cake, but I will show you again in the example what I did with the crumb cake. So can you see in here, I just added a little bit here and there, kind of randomly, the crumb cake so that you can see more dimension on the cotton. And then, but I've seen people leave it just plain white too, just like that. So, you know, it's kind of up to you, right? <laughs> it really is. So um, we have our base and the next part I'm gonna do is do a little bit of stamping. And this, uh, this embossing powder is driving me nuts here because it, it's really gritty. I hate gritty, but you know, what are we gonna do? All right, so I will bring in the Cherry Cobbler stamp pad, which is, where in the world is my Cherry Cobbler stamp pad? Oh, right here. I was about to have a heart attack. Okay, so Cherry Cobbler, and again, we're in using, we're repeating colors throughout. I love repeating colors. So we are taking the um, Simply Thankful for the Good Things and we're stamping it pretty much in the center here. This isn't too tricky, but it does help if you can look it over. And that looks pretty straight, but you, it helps when you can look straight down when you're stamping. It is definitely more ideal. <laughs> trying to look at an angle. That makes it a little harder. So I will um, bring this back in and what I like to do is first attach this part, then add the rest. But I need to leave a little space here so I can tuck in this image. So get that? Just, you gotta leave a little space. Now I've gone ahead and attached this half a doily and I've used the tear and tape. So I'm just gonna carefully take this off. Then I'm gonna bring in my wet glue and start doing 
my little zigging zagging here. So again, I'm leaving space here so that I can tuck. Just remember, you got to leave a little space so you can tuck with this card. Okay, so bringing this back in, I am going to set it so there's a little bit of space at the bottom, but I want to make sure it's nicely centered here so it looks all straight and hopefully it looks straight to you. Okay, so um, next, tucking. We're going to tuck this and see if my technique makes sense now. Okay, so um, this one I did not do dimensionals on this part because I kind of wanted the sentiment to be the center focus. Although I think the flowers are kind of more or less the focal image, but anyhow, it just kind of works better with this particular card. So I, I want to pick up and tuck it in. And then I want to make sure it's all centered and I'm happy with it. And if I'm happy with it, then that's good. Yeah, actually, I kind of like having it out just a teeny tiny bit. Okay, so there we go. It goes in. Now the dimensionals for the um, sentiment. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. And if you would like to order any of the products, Lynn is my host. Just use the um, code and I'll bring that back in. So you can see that and go to stampitup.com and when you're at the checkout just add the code and she will get credit for her the um, party tonight i will get a credit as well but she is my host so anyhow um again there are all, also some stamp sets that are on sale which you should definitely check out and i will show a few more cards at the end of this presentation which shouldn't be too long and hopefully i'll keep within my hour I'm, I've got five minutes, right? I was really hoping to keep with this within one hour. Okay, so I thought, that's pretty, but what if we add a little bow? Now, I didn't bring along all the things to do this, but it's really quite simple. You just take your three fingers and wrap it three times. Three fingers, three times. Then you hold it, then you get a second string, tie that in a knot. And this looks like it's the tails of the bow but it's really not. <laughs> All right, so here are my mini glue dots, and this makes life very easy to use glue dots for projects like this, adding bows and so forth. And I just push it down on here, pick up my glue dot, you know, set that aside, and it's a little bit sticking up, so it kind of helps if you can tuck it around itself. Let's see if I can do this gracefully. Uh, but you can kind of see, kind of bunch it up a little. And it it's a good idea to use like a pokey tool or something like that. So I like this right about there. And there you have a nice little touch. Now I can cut these tails or I can leave them. And I think I will leave them because I think they're kind of cute. And really kind of add to the card. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you um, would... Like any, you have any other questions, I'll try to respond to them. But this is one of the cards I came up with, and I will show you more from the um, country home set. Okay, so it comes with this adorable milk can. Let me see if I can find my set. I'm all in the midst of all this. Okay, so here is what everything is included. It has this jug, which is amazing. It has this milk can. It has all these beautiful, wonderful sentiments. And it has these two kind of focal flower image that are just amazing. So here is one. And this is called Chicken Wire, by the way. And it's featured with this suite. And it was on back order for over a month. Apparently, people went nuts for this chicken wire. And I kind of see why. <laughs> I was kind of crazy about it, too. It has two sides, one's silver and one's white. And there are so many possibilities with this. So I'll show you. This is the silver possibility. I don't know if you can catch that in the light. And then the, um, oh, that one doesn't have it. Okay, this one has with the buffalo check though, which is really a pretty summer card. You can make into summer. Okay, here it is. I took it and took my um, Versamark pad and stamped on the white side 
then drug it through a bunch of copper embossing powder and heat set it. And this is what I got there. It's really raised and it's so cool. I was so excited. I did a YouTube video on it, if you're wondering. All right, so that was my little idea because I thought, why not copper chicken wire? We gotta have chicken wire. So I love chicken wire. Um, I have one more card using this stamp set. Here it is. And with this jug, you just take a color lifter from the um, Stampin' Blends, the white pen, if you will, and you just dot it and it comes up with this. It makes it look like it's, I don't know what that term is when it's galvanized, I guess it is. Anyhow, I was excited about that. So the um, Still Night, I have two cards that are kind of a little bit somber, maybe, but I thought they were pretty too. I don't know if you would agree with me. I have, I do have this set featured in my card class coming up, but I'm not gonna show it tonight just because we gotta keep a few things so, a surprise. <laughs> and then um, this is from the At Home With You set. I made this beautiful card, a fall card. I did this last year, so I might have done things a little differently this time, but you, you get the idea. And this was before I had the blend, so you don't see all the dimension here. And then um, finally, I will show you a few cards that I made at a stamp class using one of the sets that is called Apron of Love that is on sale tonight. What do you think of that? And a lot of these have the framelits, which is not part of the sale. So I do want to mention that, a little disclaimer. But it's really a cute set. Look at this. <laughs> it looks like copper utensils. And this is with the... Uh, they have like this copper paper that you can buy it from Stampin' Up. Okay, so anyhow, um, I hope you enjoyed that and will um, continue to um, look at my YouTube channel and check this out. And if there's any, again, anything you want to order, um, please do. I will be on Facebook if you want to message me, if you have any questions. And I will also look back through what we did tonight and see that. So I just was going to bring in the projects. Thanks so much for watching and happy stamping. Have a great evening. Thanks again.